This video is sponsored by my course, the Unreal Engine C++ Survival Course. Using my knowledge from working in the industry, we start from the basics and work our way up until we've created an online survival game with C++. We create vehicles, clothing, weapons, steam matchmaking, and much more. Get lifetime access for $25 using the link in the description. So Unreal Engine 5 has been announced, and in the demo, two systems are talked about quite a lot. Niagara, which is used for particles, and it's used to drive bats, other things like rocks falling down the cliff face, and also these really cool bugs that react to the lighting of the player. There is also chaos shown in the trailer, which is used for destruction and cloth simulation. A lot of people don't realize, though, these systems are actually already in Unreal Engine 4 right now. They are experimental, but that does not stop us from going through and having a look. So today, we're going to look at Chaos and Niagara and learn a little bit about how to use them so that when Unreal Engine 5 comes out, you're already ahead of the game. So let's have a look. If we do some experimenting, we can look at the source code of Unreal Engine and find a plugin called Niagara. Opening up the U plugin, we can see a bunch of modules related to Niagara, and there's one here called Niagara Editor, and this is the editor functionality that I'm about to show you. So after enabling the plugin, if I go to FX, we can see a bunch of Niagara options. Basically, you make Niagara systems, and Niagara systems are containers that hold multiple emitters within them. So I'll make a new Niagara system, and I'll just choose the simple explosion template here. And opening it up, we can see three orange nodes here. These are actually separate emitters, and on the timeline, you can see these play. We could move some of these around, for example. I could move this upward mesh burst around. And now you can see the, the burst plays a little bit later on in the particle's life. The system's really cool and gives a lot of customizability and allows for things that you couldn't do before with the previous particle system, but it's more of an artist tool. So I want to talk today about where the programming side of this system actually comes in. How do you spawn Niagara particle systems, customize them with parameters and things like that? So let's take a look at how to use Niagara from C++. Here I'm using C++ to drive the color of my Niagara particle system. You can see that I'm setting it to a random color. Every single time that this ball hits the ground, we play a different color explosion. So before Niagara, the way we would declare a particle system is using the following syntax. In Unreal Engine 5 with Niagara, it's pretty much the exact same syntax. Instead though, we're using a new component, the Niagara component. Here I've declared a Niagara component, and then we initialize it the exact same way you would initialize any other component using create default subobject. On begin play, I set a Niagara variable using a function call. There are a bunch of different options for setting Niagara variables, and this will allow you to customize the look of your Niagara particle effects. So you can see here we have a bunch of different variable options. Other cool functionality that you get with Niagara that you couldn't previously get with the old particle system is you can also advance the particle simulation. So say you want the particles to skip ahead by, say, one or two seconds, you just call the advanced simulation function, and then you can tell the particles to skip forward. If you're interested in seeing all the different functions, you can open up the Niagara component.h file, and in here you'll see all the different uh, parameters and functions that are available with the Niagara component. From a functionality perspective, the Niagara component actually extends the same component that the old particle systems use. So it looks like under the hood, they use a lot of the same rendering and things like that, but the Niagara component just extends a new editor with lots of different functionality that wasn't previously available. So with the ball, basically I just set the Niagara explosion color to a random vector. And so when the ball hits anything, I just activate the Niagara component. And setting up parameters is really easy. If you come to your explosion, you can just add your own user parameter here. I just called my one user dot explosion color and it's just a vector. And then when I spawn the upward mesh burst, I just have the color set to my parameter, user.explosionColor. I think Unreal Engine users are going to be pleasantly surprised by how usable the Niagara system is. It's actually not very different from the old particle system, but you have a lot more functionality. If you drag up from a Niagara component and look at what it can do, we can do some really cool stuff. For example, advance the simulation by time. So if you want the particles to skip ahead to some time in the future, you can use a node like this to do that. You can also drag out, and under the Niagara system, there are just a bunch of functions, and you can look through all the different things that the Niagara component can do that the old particle system just didn't have the functionality for. As well as advancing the simulation, you can actually straight up just pause the simulation as well. 
here I've got a little bit of blueprint logic that after half a second will pause my Niagara component. So when I hit simulate, you can see it just straight up pauses the particle system halfway through. I don't believe this was possible with the previous Cascade system, and it's pretty cool. To be able to scrub through a particle system is actually a really awesome feature. The fact that Niagara takes advantage of using multiple different emitters to build a full system is really cool, because imagine that you come up with a smoke emitter, a boom emitter for an explosion, uh, a sparks emitter, well you might be able to make like 10 different particle systems just using those emitters. So it allows for a great level of reusability. In fact, if you right click and look at FX, there is a whole bunch of stuff for Niagara. And the whole th point of this, I believe, is they're trying to encourage reusability. So you might write one function one time, and then you might have like several different emitters using that functionality. So instead of rewriting things, you're sharing behavior across uh, many different systems. So there's a brief look at Niagara and how to use it from a C++ and Blueprint perspective. I'm not going to jump into the tool so much because it's more of an artist tool. However, Unreal has a really good live training. Uh, there's a really good talk by Chris Murphy where he talks about how to do some really cool effects with Niagara. So I will link that in the description. You can click on that if you're more interested in the tool itself and how to make particles. The next system that I'm going to talk about is Chaos. Now a lot of people know of Chaos as a way to do destruction, but it's actually a physics system and it's used for destruction, but it's also used for other things like cloth simulation as well. So we'll briefly talk about uh, Chaos and how to use it from a C++ and Blueprint perspective too. So because Chaos encapsulates so much functionality like cloth simulation as well as destruction and stuff like that, I thought we'd talk about the destruction side first because that's the one that's sort of been featured the most, but hasn't really had a lot of coverage. A lot of people haven't really talked about it. So let's explore that a little bit. At the core of the new Chaos Destruction is a system called the Geometry Collection, and it is very simple. A Geometry Collection is just an asset that holds a bunch of different pieces of geometry. So for example, if I click on this cube and I click on New, we can create a new Geometry Collection out of this cube. Here is the Geometry Collection. Currently the cube is in the Geometry Collection. It is the only thing that is in there. But if I fracture this cube and click on Fracture, you can see that now there is a lot of different pieces to the Geometry Collection. And I could even take one of these smaller pieces and then fracture that up even more. So now there's even more fractured pieces in our Geometry Collection. So you have different levels to the Geometry, and you can go through the levels like so. We can also explode the geometry, which will preview what it looks like to destroy the geometry. And we can do this on a per level basis. So this is how destruction will work in Unreal Engine 5. Getting Chaos to work right now is a little bit tricky. It requires a custom source build of the engine and also some custom settings in your target file. I will leave a link in the description to a forum post that shows you how to set this up if you want to try out Chaos for yourself. Also in Chaos, we get a ton of new functionality here. If you go to Add Component, just look at how many new components ship under the Fields section here. This is an example from one of Epic's projects, and it is an anchor field. Basically, it uses this box, and then it will apply this thing called a culling field. And in this case, it's setting all of the pieces inside of the field to be static. In this particular example, you can see that when I hit Play, it will keep these pieces inside of the cube static, whereas the rest will actually fall to the ground. Epic must see a lot of importance in these fields because there's actually a lot of examples given in their destruction project. When chaos is enabled, you'll have a chaos solver actor in your level, much like you get a nav agent when you use a navigation volume in your level. And it looks like generally this is used to configure different parameters to do with chaos. Time step multiplier mass scale, this all looks like stuff that you can use to configure the physics calculations that chaos does. Inside of the geometry collection uh, asset itself, you also get options for whether you want each piece of destruction rubble to be represented as say a sphere, a box, capsule, etc. Fields like mass are really good to fill out, this will give you a lot more realistic looking rubble. And uh, for example, for something like metal, you would have a really high mass, and this will make your chunks of destructible rubble look a lot more realistic. 
If you're looking to improve the performance with Chaos, maximum collision particles is another thing you'll want to be aware of. Basically the lower this number is, the less particles there'll be, and the better performance. And if you turn this number up, you'll generally get a better looking simulation, but at the cost of performance. You also have access to the various materials. This is the preview material that you'll see when you select something, but you can actually change what the inside looks like. So if I set this to be, for example, a green material, then when I break my cube, the inside will actually be green. So that's how you configure the material with destructible actors. I expect this to get a lot more stable. I did experience a lot of crashes when I was actually testing out the chaos destruction. So hopefully Epic continue to work on this and improve it. If you'd like to see me go deeper into the Unreal Engine 5 tools, leave a comment because I'd be really happy to do that. I only spent a few hours going over the tools before I made this video, so let me know below and uh, thank you very much for watching this video.